So in this second lecture on uniform slopes, we're simply going to talk about the process that you're going to use on your assignment. So this is an example of the sort of assignment you're going to be doing now. What we're going to give you here is we're going to give you a basic site plan. We're going to give you the finished floor elevation for the building, finished floor elevations for the patio, for the walkway in front, and for the garage, which can be lower. And very important, we're going to give you the elevations for the driveway at these points where the driveway intersects the property line. This is important because you are going to be creating a slope along this property line. It could be one uniform slope. You'll probably find it's going to be much easier to actually have a uniform slope at the top and then a second uniform slope going down to the edge of the property line. So for you, there are really two parts of this exercise. And the first part of the exercise, if you wish, is to simply provide drainage around the back of the building so the water coming down the slope doesn't go into the building. It is diverted around the building on both sides. This is the exact same process that you just completed in exercise six. So if you don't know where to start, you may want to go back and look at exercise six and see how you completed that because you are basically going to be creating a swale around the existing building to make sure that water is not flowing into the building. But an additional requirement in this assignment is you have to connect the building via the driveway to the street. And we're not going to worry about this part up here where there's a pipe. We have set elevations for you at the exact intersection points. Again, these spot elevations represent the exact intersection of the property line and the edge of the driveway. So you have to create uniform slopes that run from the garage down to the property line. And we've given you some standards that you have to follow in this exercise. We know the standards work, obviously. And we're going to go through each of these one by one with you right now to make sure that you understand what these standards are referencing. So to begin with, the first standard says a maximum of 10% slope for the first 10 feet away from the building on all lawn areas. So this area out here is all lawn. And you know that for the first 10 feet away from the building, you can have no more than a 6% slope. Now, if your finished floor elevation is set for you, you know that you can drop on the corners below that finished floor elevation. You have to drop at least six inches on each of these corners. So you know the elevation. You also know that you can drop more than six inches if you wish. You could drop a few more. Uh, we would ask you not to drop a large amount. The next standard is that you're allowed a 5% slope for the first 15 feet of the driveway from the building. So the first 15 feet from the garage going down the driveway, you're allowed to have a 5% slope. The next standard tells you that you're allowed a 12% slope on the remaining portion of the driveway. So you come out 15 feet, that first 15 feet can be a max of 5%, and then the remainder can be up to 12%. So you have the spot elevations given to you down here. You know the elevation of the garage. So that should be a fairly simple process to figure out. You can go out 15 feet from this elevation, set these spot elevations, and then check to see if you have a maximum of 12% for the remaining portion of the driveway. Fourth standard says you're allowed a maximum of 20%, otherwise a one to five slope, along the front slope. This is the same slope that you did on your terrace exercise. So you already know how far apart these contours are allowed to be. Note, this is a maximum, not a minimum, which means if that's a maximum slope, you can make it less steep if you choose, but you may not make it any steeper than 20%. The fifth standard 
is a 20% slope on the side slopes and the back slope. So these again are the same standards that you had in your terrace exercise. You have a one to five ratio or 20% slope that is the maximum that's allowed. You may always go less than that on your side slopes and on your back slope. And the final standard is a little more flexible. We're asking you to set the center line of the longitudinal slope of your swale. It must be within the desirable range as provided in the class lecture. So you're actually going to go back and look at the previous lecture, which is something we always want you to do to see what the desirable range is for this maximum slope longitudinally along this swale. So this is your basic assignment and students often ask us, all right, so where do I start? Do I start with the driveway? Do I start with the finished floor elevation? And the fact is, it's really up to you. You can work from either side, but what you do have to do is know what information that you have. So again, you always have to start with what you know. Take a look at the site plan, see what is there that's going to inform your design or restrict your design. And in this design, it's pretty obvious. You know the elevations where the driveway meets the road. You know the elevations for the building. You know that you've got a limit of work. So you need to offset about 10 feet from the property line. And you also know that you want to stay away from the trees. So you want to offset about 10 feet from the existing trees. This provides a starting point for you and the limit of works for you to start working on this project. And again, we would advise that you go back and look at the process you had in exercise six, because that process is going to be the same around the back of this building. The only additional thing that we're asking you to do now is to create uniform slope for the driveway, uniform slope for this front walk, and frankly, uniform slope is already provided for you for the back patio. So these two lectures combine to help you get started on exercise seven. Of course, we will be available to meet with you during class to answer any additional questions you have.